Well, hello and welcome to our weekly devotional. I'm Father Owen, and today we're going to be going over Sunday's Psalm, which is Psalm 146. So let's read that, and then we'll have a discussion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eye of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, we can look at this psalm and we can break it into a couple different pieces. Uh, the first two verses, in my mind, is like an intro slash chorus. Uh, it's proclaiming a life of praise. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. This is a promise that the writer of the psalm is making to the Lord. And the reason why he's doing this is uh, filled in later on in the psalm. But his being, while I have my being, I will sing praises to my God, uh, is a life of praise. So when we start looking at what the characteristics of the Lord that the writer puts forth later on, we have to remember that it's praise the Lord who's, uh, who made heaven and earth who made the sea and all that is in it, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord who keeps faith forever. So remember that while we're going through God's characteristics. So that's the first little bit. So that's the first two verses of the psalm. And then we go into this something, this other section that makes you question, well, what does this have to do? And uh, it's a contrast between what the world is pushing and what the Lord is actually able to do. And verse 3 says, Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. Let's stop right there. Princes. Uh, this is the high society, high social standing, political leaders. It's followed with, in a son of man. So, don't put your trust in those in high society. Don't put your trust in political leaders. Uh, because they're just a son of man. There's nothing special about them. And it's like capped with, in whom there is no salvation, they cannot make permanent change. There is no continuation because in verse four, when his breath departs, that's when death comes, he returns to the earth on that very day his plans perish. There's no continuation of what they've been trying to do. There's nothing that they can permanently change through their lives. They have no control of the future. When he returns to the earth, uh, makes me remember Genesis 3, 19. Uh, and the end of it is, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In the end, what these princes, what these people of high society, what these political leaders do is dust. So that's why not to put your trust in man. Why not to put your trust in the world? And the writer continues in verse 5, blessed is he whose help 
is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. That help, that word help, is that everything that could be needed is available. So the man who hopes in the God of Jacob, everything that he could possibly hope for or need is fulfilled by the God of Jacob. And then that whose hope is in the Lord his God, that hope, that word hope is with an expectation that the promises are going to be fulfilled. And it's with patience that's needed to wait for those promises to be filled, but it's with a certainty that it will happen. That hope is not a hopeless hope. It's not just wishing that this would change and knowing deep down that it's not going to. No, this is a hope knowing that change will come from the Lord, his God. And then verses six through nine is basically like the resume of who we are hoping in, who that blessed person is hoping in, the God of Jacob, the Lord, his God. This is his resume. The Lord who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. He made everything. Wow, that's like, that's hopeful. Compare that to the prince who does nothing. He hasn't created anything. He hasn't made the earth or the heavens or the sea or anything that goes in them. Who keeps faith forever. Who keeps faith forever. Wow. Uh, I think that often we get like caught up in, oh, this is never really going to change in our lifetime. Well, that faith forever, who keeps faith forever, the Lord who keeps faith forever, his promise is that his promise will be fulfilled. His promise is made in the past. And we don't know God's timing, but his promise is that he will fulfill it. And that faith that we have is forever. He, his word does not change. His promises are kept no matter what. The psalmist continues, the Lord who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. How often do we see political leaders saying, oh, I'm going to take care of this major problem. And four years later, it's the same darn thing. And the next person says, oh, I'm going to take care of the same problem, but I'm going to phrase it slightly differently. So you're going to vote for me. And it's the same darn problem over and over and over again. But the Lord is not like that. He promises that justice for the oppressed will be fulfilled. He promises to feed those who are hungry. And this is one of my favorite lines. The Lord sets the prisoners free. He breaks the bonds of holding us back. He breaks us from our everyday toil and struggle against sin because he's overcome it. This is the good news. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. That's verse eight. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. In our gospel reading from Sunday, we saw in the gospel, of Mark that Jesus healed a man who was uh, deaf and who had a speech impediment. And other miracles that he did was healing the blind. He lifts up those who are bowed down, those who are struggling to make it, those who need his help. He lifts them up. He gives them strength. The Lord watches over the sojourners. The Lord watches over the refugees, the homeless, the ones who need somewhere to stay. And the Lord watches out for them. He takes care of them. The Lord upholds the widow and the fatherless. In ancient times, the worst thing that you could be is parentless, as a child and as a woman, a widow. Because if you were widowed and you had no children, you were in trouble. Remember Ruth, the book of Ruth. This is really important. 
But the Lord says he will uphold them, the widows and the fatherless, the orphans. And then the promise is the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Yeah, right now the wicked are living it up. Right now those who are ungodly do a pretty good job of selling what they're selling, which is emptiness, which is dust. And everybody's looking for that utopia. Everybody wants the world to be good because nobody likes to see those who are weak taken advantage of. Nobody likes to see injustice. But the promise here is that the Lord will bring the wicked to justice. The way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will bring to ruin. Right now, the wicked win. In the end, the wicked don't. And that's good news. Yes, life is full of struggle. Life right now, we're in a fallen world, but it's the end game. It's a beast kicking and screaming, even though it knows it has lost. And it's trying to take as many people as possible away from the Lord. But the promise is, those who are wicked will not prevail. The Lord will prevail, the maker of heaven and earth, the creator of the sea and everything that is in all of them. And then we finish with verse 10. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. This is the culmination. So we start off with praise the Lord and we end with praise the Lord. So you can say that both of those things are um, connected. But the thing is, the Lord will reign forever. That's also a contrast to who the princes of the world compared to the princes of the world. They're not going to reign forever. They will become dust. But the Lord, the Lord is eternal. And your God, O Zion, to all generations, he will be there for all of us. And for that reason, the writer can say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. And it's not easy, uh, especially when all sorts of stuff is breaking or things aren't going our way. But in the end, the Lord wins. Jesus came and sacrificed himself on the cross for us who didn't deserve it. Right there is something to praise the Lord for. Who is the father to the fatherless, the husband to the widow. He provides and upholds them. He watches over those who are homeless. He feeds those who are hungry and he executes the justice for the oppressed that we all long to see. So what does that mean for us today? Well, it's, it's tricky because this is a song of praise and so often we don't feel like praising the Lord, now do we? I know I don't, especially when something breaks or some extra work that wasn't expected has been put on me or, you know, the everyday toil or spiritual oppression or when the wicked world and those who are of this world oppress us. It's not easy to praise the Lord. But you know, one of the things that I find that helps me is actually going into the Psalms. The Psalms were the hymnal of Israel. And uh, so often we don't appreciate what it is that they are conveying. And this is a, a contrast between what the world is offering and what the Lord is offering and what the Lord has promised and what the world has promised. And really it just boils down to, are we going to wait with hopeful expectation knowing that we need patience, but with a certainty that it will happen? And that uplifts my downtrodden soul. And then being able to join in with the psalmist, praising the Lord with all that I am, knowing that he is able where I am not, where he will make all things new and make injustice go away. In fact, he will destroy injustice and the wicked will perish. 
we wait expectantly for our Lord to return, knowing that his promises are true, knowing that he is faithful forever and he keeps it. May we be hopeful and know that our help, everything that we could possibly need, is found in the Lord our God. Amen. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Have a blessed week.